Morning everyone. Uh, this is not a blade related vi video, um, but I thought it might be interesting just to, to sh show the process here. I uh, picked up this old Rockwell drill press off of Facebook Marketplace for a couple hundred bucks. These are great old units. Um, they're, they're built like tanks. Um, and this one just needs a little bit of love. Uh, it was working fine when I got it, but the switch was intermittently um, shutting off on its own, uh, you, or you'd have to hold the button to keep it running. Uh, popped open the, the faceplate here, and I can see that the insulation on these switch wires is just, just crumbling. Um, you, can, you can touch it and it just picks apart. So there's probably just a short behind the switch, and that's, that's, I'm assuming that's what's causing the problem. But also some other little things. It, it needs, uh, I'd like to put some new knobs on this handle here. I'm just going to touch it up a little bit. So we're going to rewire it. For years, I've been using this old uh, Harbor Freight bench top drill press that you see in the background there. It's been serviceable. It's been fun. Uh, it was a good, definitely for the money, definitely a good purchase. But uh, I abused the heck out of it, and you know, just trying to go through harder steels here and there, I, I put too much pressure on it. Eventually, that table started to bend a little bit. I tried to force it back with a crowbar. I was able to bend it back a little bit, but I also noticed that the, I guess you call this the pillar. Um, started to, to bend back and and it started to pull away from the base. Then I tried to weld it, but the, the material that they use for that pillar is so thin that I ended up going right through it and it just wasn't any it wasn't worth the trouble. I've been kind of needing meeting meaning to get a a heavier unit anyway. So so here we are really happy with this purchase and hopefully we can get it flying here and uh and we'll see how it goes. If you have any questions, comments. Thanks. I'm probably going to do some things wrong or in a way that is maybe not consistent with uh, with people who actually know what they're doing. Condition, and I imagine that without the short back here, it'd be functioning just as it should. And I really don't want to have to go through the hassle. I don't know. Looks like they might have something holding in place back here. No? The way I talk. So hopefully it's tolerable. All right. So that looks pretty good, pretty tight. Looks like we're gonna have to put some force on this to get it through. Hopefully nothing catches. Three inches of, of extra wire that I can coil back on itself. That way in the future, if anyone has to rewire a switch or something like that, they've got a little extra to work with. But uh, yeah, I'll cut this here, pull back my insulation, Box get these there. wires ready but it was cut at this end um, I'm just gonna cap it on this side and I left a little length in case I don't know if that might be used if you I don't know what that might be used for but rather than cutting it short like this I'll, I'll leave a little bit of that on there yeah, sure anyway, that get the idea. You know, when you got everything back where it's supposed to be that the things are working before you close it all up so got it plugged back in there we go good to see you Okay, now that I've subjected you to a healthy dose of semi-coherent rambling as I worked along there, hopefully you picked up on the idea. I ended up replacing all the wiring for not only the, the switch panel, but also the motor wiring itself. It was all pretty rotted out and it just needed to go. Everything rewired pretty smooth and uh, now I'm on to the next part of the operation, which is just straightening out this control lever that had got mangled up over the years. This video is not intended to be a complete, step-by-step, in-detailed guide to rebuilding a drill press. Um, more just of a, a general overview of the process that I went through. Um, and it's not even really a complete rebuild. It's just, just touching up in some areas where it needed help. Obviously, the wiring was necessary. Um, I end up, um, as you'll see coming up here, I'm going to replace the, the bearings the spindle bearings and the seals in there as well. So we go a little bit farther than where I thought I was going to go with the introduction, but there's actually quite a few other things that I'd like to get to with this drill press that I'm not going to do in this in this video. 
This is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just mixing up some two-part epoxy to attach these, these knobs um, onto the control lever. I picked up these knobs from Amazon. I think it cost me four bucks for a three-pack. And uh, I just had to drill them out to the 7 16 size of the lever rod there. Some of these drill presses, um, even some of the same model I've seen, have a three-pronged lever set up. Some of them just have one handle lever. Um, mine, as you can see, it just has that pass-through, so it's, you know, two ends of the same bar, which I'm pretty happy with. I don't usually like to change my grip as I'm, as I'm using a drill press, so I just kind of grab one and I go with it. And you can adjust the positioning of that lever by um, changing the position of the splines on the lever assembly. So I just kind of like to put it in a position that feels comfortable and then just keep my hand on it as I rotate it. Not sure how much you can hear there, but obviously the wiring's working, everything uh, electrically is doing what it's supposed to do, but it just feels rough. Um, and that's when I decided to go ahead and move forward with the process of changing the bearings in this quill and spindle assembly. Now when removing the spindle pulley, you have to find, well one thing I should say is that I've, I've doing some online searching, I found that the process for this is different depending on your model. But for mine, there's actually a little hole that goes through the pulley and you have to access this stop bolt um, or the set screw that, that attaches to the spindle. It took me a while to find that. It was kind of hard to get the right size screwdriver in there, but once you get it in there, it, it slides off pretty easy. The next step is to remove the quill and spindle assembly, and that's all pretty much held in place by the control lever. And to get that off, you have to first remove this clock spring assembly which also anchors the lever in from the other side. I would recommend releasing this tension completely before you try to pop off this clock spring assembly. Um, it's not really under high tension, so I don't think it's really dangerous, but as you can see, it kind of spins out in my hand here, and uh, you know, I just kind of want to be careful of that. And I definitely recommend taking this side off first. If you were to try to pull the lever assembly out, um, it would put a lot of undue strain on that clock spring and I think it could bend or break it because the spring actually slides through a slot at the end of the threaded the threaded end of the, the lever assembly there. Once that pops off, this thing can kind of wiggle your way out there. You can see it's pretty gunked up and it's probably been a while since anybody's serviced it. But now there's nothing really holding this thing in here. Just make sure you got room and you move your work table down, you can slide that whole thing out. As a general rule, you just want to be careful when you're handling this. You don't want to drop it or bang it on anything, so when it comes back together, it slides smooth like it's supposed to. I picked up these materials from a company called Hammerscale online. Uh, that's all one word. I don't have a link, but you can just Google search that. They had a pretty good selection of uh, replacement parts for Rockwell, Delta Rockwell drill presses, various models. I'm sure they have a lot of other stuff too. I didn't really go investigating, but pretty happy with their service. Uh, they got those parts out to me really quickly and uh, I think that little bag of parts cost me 40 bucks after shipping, something like that. And I'd say that's well worth it. Um, everything was the correct tolerances and, uh, and it matched up nicely with, with what I have here. So shout out to them. Good job Hammerscale, wherever you are. Um, you want to be careful when you're handling this stuff. Uh, you don't want to mar this. So if you're prying it and banging on it, um, you're probably doing something wrong. Everything comes out in a very precise order, and if you do it in, in the right order, you shouldn't be fighting these bearings too, too much. Worst case scenario, you have to take a block of wood and, and bang on the back of the spindle to get something to lock in place. Um, for mine, and this varies model to model, I had to remove this threaded retaining uh, stop. This holds my lower bearing assembly tight in the housing of the quill. I actually didn't see this at first and I did try to force this thing out. Once I got the upper bearing off, I tried to bang this through and it just took me a minute to realize that it's just not going anywhere. But again, you don't want to force it. Once you realize something's not going, take a minute and uh, track down the obstruction. Probably would have been a good idea for me once I got that 
bearing assembly out, you can see this pops out pretty easily. Would have been a good idea to probably take the chuck off before I did all of this um, because it's easier, would have been easier for me to hold it in my vise with the quill assembly as opposed to trying to hold the spindle there. But uh, anyway, I did it kind of backwards. They do make tools for this as well. They make um, like a forked wedge. I didn't have that. I used a little masonry nail here. One good whap, whack and it popped right off. Um, but you do want to be careful. Again, you don't want to scratch or mar the surface of your quill. The space between the two bearing races is really gunked up on mine. It's rusty and old, but you really don't have to worry too much about that. Um, that's not very important. There's nothing, there's nothing touching there. That's a kind of a hollow expanse. What is important is the races where the bearings actually sit. You want those to be very clean and uh, you also don't want to use any oil or anything. Use some solvent to clean it out and uh, make sure it's dry and, and there's nothing or no grime in there or anything. And when you put those bearings back in there, the bearings ha are going to come sealed with factory lube. So you don't want to pack those with grease or anything like that. Pretty straightforward here. I'm just kind of cleaning things up. This is not a really a thorough restoration. It's just a service. If you decide you're going to take on a project like this, it's a good idea to have a diagram, a schematic. Um, I was able to get the owner's manual. The guy that sold me this unit was nice enough to send me a link or the PDF file. So I was able to print out um, the original manual. It's pretty helpful. It's got all the part numbers and it's got a, you know, a blow up of this thing. So I could see how everything is supposed to fit together. Um, the photographs were from like 1970 and I imagine it's been copied and recopied a hundred times so they were a little bit hard to see but you could get a general idea and it was certainly a lot better than uh, flying blind. Now that we've got everything cleaned up we're just reassembling. different ways a chuck can be held onto a spindle. This one utilizes what's called a Jacobs taper, which is just like, like it sounds. It's just a tapered spindle and the chuck fits right on there. Um, this is how I was told to do it. I used the floor just to get a better angle on it, but you want to put a block of wood on either side and give it one good whack once you got it as tight as you can by hand, and that should seat the chuck nicely onto the spindle. A word of caution here, as you can see I put a bit of axle grease on the quill assembly, on the back splines, and also on the splines of this control lever. Uh, it was a pretty cold day, it was about 35 degrees when I was working in the shop this day, but uh, it was very tight and I ended up having to take that spindle assembly off and remove some of that grease. So uh, if you're doing this you might want to use something lighter like a, like a white lithium grease or something along those lines. Something with a low temp feature so that it doesn't get tacky in the cold. Um, but yeah, just something I learned. And I'm just cleaning up these, this pulley assembly with, um, I use some carb cleaner here. And it was cold, so I was working indoors with the, with the shop clothes. Um, so as you'll see in a few minutes here, I ended up putting my respirator on because that carb cleaner put off some pretty nasty fumes. But we got it cleaned up, pretty good condition here. It's not perfect, but a lot better than it was. Again, this is a little tricky. You have to find, you have to line up where that, that, that bushing inside the pulley assembly fits up with the set screw hole and you have to put that in to position before you lower the assembly down and then you have to stick the screwdriver through the hole from the outside to tighten it. That screw wants to dance around a little bit on you for a while but eventually if you mess with it enough you can find your way into the slot and get it seated properly. 
Just putting our tension back on here. Now I'm just reinstalling the clock spring assembly which controls the return tension on the lever control. I've just got a 2x4 back there bracing the lever control arm while I attach everything and then I'm just going to add some tension here. The way I did it was eventually I just removed the 2x4 and bring the entire quill assembly all the way down and then I turn it until I see it starts to move up and that tells me I'm getting pretty close to where I want for that return tension. Uh, I made a few test runs here and as you can see it takes me a while before I get it really dialed in where I want. I just keep adding a little bit more tension until it springs back the way I want it to and eventually I get it to where it, it snapped back into place, place pretty nicely. Not quite there yet. There we go. I don't know how well you can tell from this video, but um, it sounds much better and it runs much more smooth than it did before I did this bearing swap, so I'm pretty happy with the results here. Alright, well that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful or mildly entertaining. And as always, if you have any questions, just drop them down into the comments field and I'll definitely get back to you. If you're feeling really generous, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to keep the content flowing, and that really means a lot. It goes a long way for me. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.